And next is Senator Feinstein. Thanks very much, um, Madam Chairman. Um, I'd like to ask this question. In August of 2017, DHS, Office of Intel and Analysis, and the Virginia Fusion Center issued a report days before the violent protests in Charlottesville, Virginia. The report warned that the protests could be among the most violent to date. It warned that anarchist extremists and white supremacist extrem extremists are calling on supporters to be prepared for and to instigate violence at the 12 August rally. Now this was very similar to what we saw in the lead up to the January 6th insurrection when groups were actively planning to come to Washington and commit violence. Yet there was no similar intelligence report by the Department of Homeland Security for this occasion. My question is why and what happened to change this procedure? Yes, Senator, uh, thank you for that question. Um, between before the election and then into uh, the inauguration, INA did publish 15 separate unclassified reports that did discuss specifically that there was a heightened threat environment, that the threat could come from lone actors or small cells. We assessed that those that were motivated by concerns about the election and grievances associated largely with COVID-19 restrictions would also appear to be armed. And we also warned that they could transition quickly from a peacetime situation into a violent situation. I actually, in preparation for this hearing, did review all of those reports and was impressed with how well the team did. They were very well written and very specific. The point, Senator, is that we thought we had provided that warning. We did not have anything specific about an attack on the Capitol to occur on January 6th. So we did not issue a separate report. In hindsight, we probably should have, but we had just issued a report on December 30th with our colleagues at FBI and the National Counterterrorism Center. Well, we had thought, ma'am, that that was sufficient. Yeah, I'd like to ask that you make those reports available to this committee. Happy to, uh, ma'am. Please. Um, also, press reports indicate that Acting Defense Secretary Christopher Miller issued a memo on January 4th preventing the D.C. National Guard from receiving weapons or protective gear, interacting with protesters, or employing riot control agents without his personal authorization. Do you know of any other instance where a defense secretary required personal authorization before allowing National Guard troops to respond to an emergency? And I'd like to put the letter from Christopher Miller, uh, Madam Chairman, in the file, if I could. Uh, yes, without objection. Could someone answer that oh, question? I'm sorry, Senator. I'll, I'll answer that question. I was waiting. Um, Senator, I'm, I'm not aware of an, another letter from a secretary. But again, based on events in the spring and S Secretary Miller being uh, new to the department at that time and some of the things mindful that had happened, he issued that direction. That direction, though, again, I'd come back to the point that in order for National Guard members to deploy in civil disturbance operations, it requires the Secretary of Defense's approval. So just as, to be clear, there's the, the, there is no ability for the military to respond without the Secretary's approval for civil disturbance operations. Well, if I may, Madam Chairman, um, I'm looking at a memo uh, for Secretary of the Army, um, employment guidance for the District of Columbia National Guard dated January 4, 2021, I received it. Um, and it responds to a memorandum regarding the district's request uh, for support for the planned demonstrations from January 5th to 6th, 2021. And you are authorized to approve the requested support subject to my guidance below, subject to consultation 
And um, then it points out a number of things that are not authorized. So this letter of January 4, I'd like to be in the record because um, somewhere there's a problem here. And I've been listening carefully trying to find out what the problem is, but there were certain reports that just were not issued and they were of an intelligence nature. And uh, I'm curious about finding out which ones essentially did what. So if you have any response to that, other reports, um, and could let this committee know, it would be appreciated. Yes, ma'am, happy to do so. We, I think the key here is, and I think um, my DHS colleague mentioned this, is the intelligence we had articulated that we knew people were coming to the D.C. area. We knew there was a possibility they would come armed and potentially have conflict amongst themselves. What we lacked, and I think you heard this last week from all the folks that testified as well, none of us had any intelligence that suggested individuals were going to storm and breach the Capitol, and that was the intelligence that we lacked. Well, I think that remains to be seen, but I appreciate the comment, and uh, I, I think that's what this committee has to look for and make a determination whether there was, in fact, uh, adequate um, pre-question, pre-interest, and uh, there is a record, and I thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you.